Have you ever wondered about the birth of our existence, the inception of life as we know it? As we journey back to the dawn of time, we find ourselves at the heart of an epic tale, a narrative that has shaped civilizations and fueled centuries of contemplation. This is the story of Genesis chapter 2, a chapter that stands alone in its profound implications and intricate details. In the vast expanse of the cosmos, a divine plan was set into motion, a plan that would culminate in the creation of life, of humanity. This is not just a tale of creation, but a story that delves deep into the very essence of existence. It's a tale filled with mystery, intrigue and divine intervention, a tale that has inspired countless interpretations and debates. As we delve into this intricate narrative, we'll explore the mysteries that lie within, questioning what we know and challenging our perceptions. Let's embark on this celestial journey as we unravel the mystique of Genesis chapter 2. In the beginning there was nothing, and then there was the seventh day. From the void of the cosmos, after six days of cosmic orchestration, there came a moment, an epoch, a day unlike any other. This was the seventh day, the day God chose to cease his work, to pause his grand symphony of creation. God, the author of existence, had woven the tapestry of life, etched the mountains, breathed life into the oceans, adorned the heavens with stars, and sculpted the creatures of the land. After this magnificent spectacle of creation, God chose to rest on the seventh day, not from weariness, but completion. In this moment of divine repose, God did not merely rest. He blessed this day, sanctified it, set it apart from all others. It was a day imbued with tranquility, a testament to the splendor of creation. And so, the seventh day was born, sanctified and blessed, a day of rest after the grandeur of creation. From the cosmic void, a paradise was born, the Garden of Eden. Picture a land of unmatched beauty and abundance, a radiant oasis amidst a barren universe. This was the Garden of Eden, a divine masterpiece an embodiment of celestial aesthetics and magnificence. This was no ordinary garden. It was a paradise, a sanctuary, a divine playground blooming with life. Now imagine, from the very dust of the ground, life began to stir. A form began to take shape, an outline of a figure, a man. Crafted from the earth itself, the first man was born, a creation embedded with the breath of life. But the marvel of Eden did not stop there. Its heart held two trees, unique and significant. The tree of life, a symbol of eternal existence, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, a symbol of awareness and discernment. These were no ordinary trees, they were the essence of life and wisdom, standing tall amidst the lush greenery of Eden. And there was water, four rivers that flowed out of Eden. Their waters were clear and pure, meandering through the garden, nourishing the land and giving life to every creature that dwelled within its boundaries. Thus, the Garden of Eden came into existence, a paradise amidst the emptiness, a home for the man. A realm of tranquility and harmony, Eden was a testament to the divine power of creation. In the heart of Eden, the man was not alone. The Creator, in his infinite wisdom, perceived that it was not good for the man to be solitary. Stirred by compassion, he contemplated a suitable partner to share in the man's existence. In the stillness of the Edenic twilight, a deep sleep fell upon the man. The Creator, with divine precision, took one of the man's ribs. From this humble fragment, the architect of all life fashioned a new creature, distinct yet intimately connected to the man. This new creation, the woman, was not made from the dust of the ground like the man and all other living creatures. Instead, she was sculpted from the very substance of the man, a symbol of their indissoluble unity. She was bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. When the man awoke, he beheld this new companion and recognized her as part of himself. He named her woman, for she was taken out of man. In this moment, an eternal bond was forged, an alliance of mutual support and companionship. And the garden, once a domain of solitude, now echoed with the harmony of shared existence. In this way, the Creator completed his masterpiece. He had not only created a paradise, but also the first companionship, a testament to the intrinsic need for connection and unity among all living beings. And so, the man was no longer alone. 
In the heart of paradise he found his companion, and life in Eden began. Subscribe to the channel for more video, and please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this.